Throughout the world, various sized patrol craft are utilizing stern launch and recovery systems for launching small, mission-oriented boats from a mothership. These craft are typically small, quick, maneuverable vessels known as FRCs, or fast response craft. The FRCs can serve in rescue missions or for patrol and surveillance. The Coast Guard's objective is to fulfill its basic protective mission in times of sophisticated technologies. The U.S. Coast Guard's Engineering Logistics Center has investigated the effectiveness of the boat deployment systems, the basic objective being to develop criteria both for the craft and the launch protocol. The ships investigated in the survey ranged in length from 87 feet to about 300 feet. Launch and retrieval speeds vary from 3 to 10 knots, with preferred speeds of 4 to 6 knots. The boats investigated were designed to operate in sea states 3 to 6. In general, it was found that successful operations occurred in conditions lower than the designed sea states. In the next few minutes, you will see different techniques employed using a stern ramp or a docking well. There will be different methods of launching the small boats, and different retrieval and recovery methods, and different types of equipment will be used to accomplish this goal. When the word rib is mentioned, it means rigid hull inflatable boat. This is typically a craft of aluminum or composite construction, fitted with an air-filled neoprene-covered fendering system. We will also compare characteristics of ribs and other boats with conventional or composite construction. The Japanese Coast Guard ship Irimo has operated for 10 years with a stern docking system that is capable of launching and recovering a small boat in up to one meter high seas. Below the helicopter deck at the transom aft is a stern well. This well is normally dry when the gate is closed. Here is a roller and flap mechanism that dampens the surge of water into and out of the well. The well is covered with fendering blocks to protect the small boat during boat operations. In preparation for launch, the well is flooded. Next, hydraulic cylinders open the stern gate. The small boat is 5.5 meters long, a diesel-powered water jet-propelled craft which is backed out of the well under its own power. The boat is once again a fast response craft, FRC. She has a fiberglass hull and cockpit amidships for the personnel. Clearly, the wake behind the ship is very turbulent. It's caused basically by water passing around the hull and eddies created by the propellers. For recovery operations, the ship heads directly into the waves. As the FRC approaches the ship, it can be seen to swerve from side to side, navigating through the stern wake and into the ship. Upon recovery, the stern gate is closed, secured, and the well is pumped dry. The operating hydraulics, shown here, are fairly massive. Cylinders are located near the top of the gate, close to the hinge point. The securing dogs also are hydraulic devices, although somewhat smaller in size. The Arimo maintains its small boat side launch capability preferred for use in seas above one meter. This would be a good point to compare side launch with stern launch. First, there is a substantial investment in training required to be proficient at stern launching. However, the side launch protocols require more personnel and more time. Stern recovery typically gets personnel aboard quicker. These factors should be considered when comparing the two methods. The Finnish Frontier Guard has employed a ramp for stern launch and recovery operations. The stern launch system is capable of operating in up to one half meter high seas. The Finnish ship uses a unique cradle assembly to launch and recover the FRC. The ship is ice capable and the sill of the ramp is located 12 inches above the waterline. The high sill is necessary to prevent ice from entering the ramp during backing operations. The cradle assembly was developed to permit launch and recovery operations with the high sill. The ramp is located in the stern and surmounted by a framework that accommodates a protective cover like a tarpaulin. The stern doors are hinged to open aft as opposed to swinging overhead as with a gate. The rib is secured in a cradle with a hydraulically operated arm which captures the bow. 
To launch the rib, the cradle is lowered down the ramp by a winch until the rib is in the water. Engines are started, and a launch control operator releases the bow arm, allowing the coxswain to power out. The cradle is constructed of tubular sections which fit the hull of the rib. They are padded at strategic points. In preparation for recovery, the cradle is lowered into the water and the bow arm is raised. Notice that the bottom of the ramp is shaped to accommodate the hull. At the forward end is a winch, hydraulically operated. The drum is off the center line and cables directed by shivs to pull the boat straight in. Recovery Operations The ship sets a course running with the waves. The coxswain lines the rib up with the cradle and powers his way into the cradle. It's locked into place by the bow arm. When secure, the cradle and rib are winched up the ramp to the stowed position. When the boat is secure, the stern door closes. The U.S. Navy's PC-14 was designed to carry and launch fast recovery craft, in this case, RHIVs. The ship has a stern launch system that is capable of operating in up to a half meter high seas. There are two different size small boats, the 7-meter Navy rib and the 11-meter SEAL support rib. The unique feature of the PC-14 is her ability to adapt to either boat configuration. The rib is secured in the ramp both fore and aft with tie-downs. The 7-meter rib is powered by a 150 horsepower diesel engine with an outdrive unit. It has a range of 170 nautical miles and a top speed in excess of 25 knots. Complement is three crew and four passengers. It is seaworthy up to a sea state of five and winds of 34 knots or less. It's supported in the ramp by adjustable tubular longitudinal skids and keel blocks. The boat is attached to the winch with a quick release hook that can be activated from either inside the rib or by a crew member on deck. In preparation for the launch, stern doors are opened to 105 degrees in operational practice, it takes as few as two people in the rib and just one on deck to accomplish this phase. The rib is lowered down the ramp until the outdrive is submerged. Then the engine can be started. You will also notice the adjustable fender on the side of the ramp. These can be adjusted for use with either the 7-meter rib or the 11-meter rib. The boat is held here on the end of the ramp as all conditions and equipment proper for launch are confirmed. The quick release mechanism is tripped, the bow pendant pulled up and secured to the Samson post. The rib then backs away from the ship. The ramp has friction reducing blocks down near the sill. It is formed correctly to accommodate the rib. The stern flap is covered with fendering material thus acting as a sill for recovery of the rib. This provides the ramp with a sill depth of 15 inches. Before the boat can be retrieved, the quick-release hook needs to be removed from the winch line and a simple snap hook attached in its place. This permits a quicker hookup for recovery. In preparation for recovery, the ship is headed directly into the waves. The winch hook is then secured to the bow pendant and the boat is winched up the ramp to its stowed position. With the boat secure in the ramp, the stern door is closed. Before the boat can be launched again, the snap hook needs to be removed from the winch line and a quick release hook attached in its place. To accomplish this, personnel tie the rib down. The boat is secured to the ramp during this operation and the retrieval hook is removed from the winch cable. The quick release hook is attached and secured to the rib the quick-release tagline can be clipped on. The 11-meter rib is preferred by U.S. Navy Special Forces. Stern launch and recovery operations are basically the same, since the tubular longitudinal supports can be reconfigured to suit the 11-meter craft. Side fenders are also adjustable. The quick-release is pulled by a deckhand, bow pendant secured to the Samson post, and the rib backs out of the ship.
The coxswain fights his way through the turbulent wake of the PC-14 to approach the stern. The difficulty with slow speed direction control, inherent with water jet propelled boats, is exhibited as the rib winds its way through the stern wake on the way to the ramp. The rib enters the ramp area and under its own power maintains its position until the winch line can be brought to the bowman for hookup. Once attached, the rib can be winched up to its stowed position. We can note now that the winch line here is guided by two people on each side of the ramp, thus no crew member is required to enter the ramp area to retrieve the rib. This feature represents a change instituted by the Navy for safety reasons. The Coast Guard operates many classes of vessels, but only one has stern launch capability. This is the 87-foot Coastal Patrol Boat. The stern launch system on this vessel is capable of operating in up to two meter high seas, with the preferred heading for recovery operations being directly into the waves. The fast response craft is lodged in a ramp located aft and secured in the ramp by a quick release mechanism. In preparation for the launch, the stern gate has been opened. The engine is started while the boat is in the ramp. It can be run up for five minutes before launching. And on the command for launch, the quick release is pulled, allowing the rib to slide down the ramp and out the stern. The ramp is shaped to fit the bottom of the rib and lined with ultra-poly friction-reducing strips. Hydraulic cylinders operate the stern gate from high on the ramp walls, thus preventing interference with them during boat ops. The stern wake can be seen flooding the ramp. The normal sill submergence is 14 inches. The rib is powered by a diesel engine and propelled by a water jet. Recovery is accomplished by visually lining the rib up with the ramp, guiding it through the stern wake and entering the ramp. At this point, the deckhand lassos the Samson post, thus capturing the rib on the ramp. The winch cable is fitted with a quick release attached to the post. The electric winch pulls the rib to its stowed position and the lasso is removed. Once the boat is in the stowed position, the stern gate is closed. The Gordon Reed is a 50 meter long Type 500 Canadian Coast Guard ship operating in the coastal waters near British Columbia. On the Gordon Reed, launch and recovery operations can be performed in seas as high as four to six meters. She's been operating for 10 years with a stern launch system. During the early years, stern launch and recovery operations were only performed in sea states of three or less. Now, after operating over 10 years, launch and recovery operations are performed in sea states as high as six. The Gordon Reed uses a hydraulically operated self-spooling winch attached to a tilting platform. And the rib rests on longitudinal friction reducing skids. When not in use, the rib is tied down fore and aft by web straps across the boat and back down to the platform. A simple quick release mechanism attached to a pendant on the bow of the rib releases the boat. The launch sequence commences when the captain selects the course and speed. Next, when they're stable, command of launch passes to the coxswain. The coxswain then determines the exact moment of launch. Stern doors are opened and the ramp is lowered, as you see here. At this stage, the ship has a forward speed of about six knots. Here's the sequence. The boat is lowered down the ramp. The coxswain starts the engines. The bowman pulls the quick release and the coxswain backs the rib out of the ramp area. The rib is a Zodiac Hurricane Model 733, powered by twin 150 horsepower outboards. The boat is mainly used for fisheries inspections and search and rescue missions. She has a top speed of 45 to 50 knots. The rib is equipped with a self-writing feature in the event the boat were to turn over. Now the recovery sequence. The coxswain requests permission to board. The ship is brought to a course parallel with the waves and the speed is set to about six knots. When course and speed are stable, the captain gives permission to the coxswain to come aboard. The stern ramp is then lowered. The winch line is paid out and held alongside the ramp area. The coxswain then makes a final determination to suit sea conditions and proceeds to the ramp. 
the approach speed of the small boat is about twice that of the mothership. With a sill depth of 34 inches, timing the recovery to match the sea conditions is not a problem. As the boat comes in, the winch line is passed to the bowman, who attaches the quick-release hook to the bow pendant. The deckhand operates the winch to pull the boat to its stowed position. The Gordon Reed is equipped with this winch, which can pull the rib fully home when necessary. In another recovery, the stern wake can be an important factor. It's unpredictable, and not all recoveries are equally smooth, as you can see from this sequence. As the rib enters the ramp, the wake pushes the boat to one side, causing it to enter the ramp on a severe angle. In this recovery, the rib was able to power its way out of the ramp area in order to re-enter the ramp with the proper attitude and correct a bad situation. This is Curaçao Harbor. The Netherlands Antilles and Aruba Coast Guard has recently acquired three 41 meter long patrol craft. This ship is the Jaguar. She uses a stern ramp very similar to the one employed by the U.S. Coast Guard on the 87-foot WPB. The stern launch system on the Jaguar is capable of operating in seas as high as 2 meters. The fast recovery craft is 7 meters long, diesel-powered, water jet propelled, and secured in the notch with a bow tether and a quick release. This launch and recovery takes place in Sea State 3 off the coast of Curaçao. The hydraulically powered stern gate opens up over the stern well. To launch the boat, the bowman pulls the quick release mechanism and the boat slides down the ramp and out of the stern. The stern ramp is lined with friction reducing material shaped to fit the bottom of the rib. For launch and recovery operations, the ship prefers to head directly into the waves. With the stern gate open, the wake from the boat can be seen entering and leaving the ramp. The sill depth on the Jaguar is approximately 12 inches. To recover the rib, the rib takes up a course behind the ship and powers its way up the ramp. Note the lighter colored blocks of material at the end of the ramp. These were added for fendering purposes as the rib is recovered. The line is tossed, secured to the boat and wrapped around the capstan at the head of the ramp to pull the rib to its stowed position. And then the stern gate is closed. This is Acapulco Harbor. The Mexican Navy has built a new class of ships used mainly for drug interdiction. This ship is capable of launch and recovery operations in seas up to one meter high. This was the only vessel visited that was both helicopter capable and used a stern ramp to launch a small boat. The enclosed operating station on this 11 meter interceptor boat is unique. The boat is aluminum with a deep V-hull form. It's powered by twin 300 horsepower diesel engines and water jet propulsion, giving her a top speed of 45 knots. Range is 300 nautical miles at 25 knots. The crew of four is seated immediately behind the cabin. The stern ramp, fitted under the helicopter flight deck, has a shallow angle due to the overhead restriction. The bottom of the ramp complements the hull form of the interceptor and is surfaced with strips of friction-reducing material. Its sill is at the waterline and is fitted with a metal roller at the center. The interceptor boat will not slide down the ramp under its own weight due to the ramp's low angle. Two capstans are used to launch her. There is one on each side of the ramp. A line is fitted around the bow and leads to the capstans. On command of the officer in charge, the boat is pulled down the ramp and out the stern. After launch, the crew starts the boat's engines. The stern gate is hydraulically powered from a central unit that also powers other machinery on the ship. The gate is operated by hydraulic cylinders that lock, unlock, and open it. The winch and capstans are also electric. The boat winch is forward on the center line and uses a cable and hook to attach a wire cable loop to the bow. These are used only during recovery. Recovery is accomplished by stopping the ship dead in the water. 
The interceptor lines up with the ramp and grounds on the sill. The boat is held on the sill by its own power. A deckhand pulls the winch line down the ramp and attaches it to the interceptor. When the boat has been recovered, it is secured to the head of the ramp and the winch line removed. And then the gate is closed. The U.S. Coast Guard Engineering Logistics Center has presented this report on worldwide operations of small boat launch and recovery together with the associated gear and personnel procedures. We wish to extend our acknowledgement and grateful thanks to the governments and agencies that cooperated generously in bringing you this report. <music>